Today we know that neutrons are one of the constituents of atoms along with protons and electrons. The existence of a neutral particle that would result from the capture of an electron by a proton was first proposed in 1920 by Ernest Rutherford. Eight years later, an experiment was carried out in Germany that marked the first step in the search for this new particle. In 1928, Walter Bolter and his student Herbert Becker bombarded beryllium with alpha particles emitted from polonium, a radioactive substance, and found that it gave off a penetrating, electrically neutral radiation, which they interpreted to be gamma rays, high-energy photons. Then in 1932, Irene Joliot-Curie and her husband Frederick used their polonium alpha source to look further into Bolter and Becker's penetrating radiation. They found that this radiation ejected protons from a paraffin target. They mistakenly interpreted the results as the action of photons on hydrogen atoms in paraffin, in the same way that photons falling on a metal surface eject electrons. The trouble is that an electron is almost 2,000 times lighter than a proton. And as we now know, gamma photons simply don't have enough energy to eject protons from paraffin. James Chadwick at the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge reported to Rutherford on the Joliot-Curie's results and then repeated their experiments. He not only bombarded the hydrogen atoms in paraffin with the beryllium emissions, but he also used helium, nitrogen and other elements as targets. By comparing the energies of recoiling charged particles from different targets, he proved that the beryllium emissions contained a neutral component with a mass approximately equal to that of the proton. In a paper published on February the 17th, 1932, he called this new particle the neutron and three years later received the Nobel Prize in Physics for his work. The neutron was the fourth elementary particle to be discovered after the electron, proton and photon. It's 1839 times more massive than the electron and marginally more massive than the proton. Because it's electrically neutral, the neutron must be bound into the atomic nucleus by a powerful force that doesn't depend on electric charge. And this is the so-called strong force. Within a nucleus, the neutron is stable, but in a free state, it's unstable, with a half-life of about 15 minutes, decaying into a proton, an electron, and an antineutrino. This decay of the neutron indicates yet another force at work, which we now know to be the weak force. Despite being electrically neutral, the neutron does have both an electric dipole moment as if it were made of a positive and a negative electric charge separated by a tiny distance, and a magnetic moment, both of which point to an internal electrical structure. In fact, it's now known that the neutron, like the proton, is composed of smaller charged particles, one up quark and two down quarks. Neutrons are highly penetrating and are moderated or slowed down by colliding with the nuclei of light atoms. In nuclear reactors, they induce heavy nuclei, such as those of uranium, to undergo nuclear fission, and so play a crucial role in the production of nuclear energy. Like all particles, neutrons display wave properties, and their diffraction can be used to study the structure of crystals. In fact, on a personal note, I did six months research in neutron diffraction at the Atomic Energy Research Establishment in Harwell, Oxfordshire, before switching my PhD to astronomy. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks very much for watching.